Exploring the unknown From conspiracies To mysteries You are entering the conspiracy sector Well, welcome everybody to this very special program I'm your host, Aubrey Batchelor. Joining me, sailing this knowledgeable ship, is Chris Jacobs, and you are entering the conspiracy sector. Today is our second holiday special. Today we are going to surround a Thanksgiving story with creepiness that will get your holiday ramped up into a amazing little cocktail party of creepy, eerie stories. So who doesn't love learning about creepy, eerie things? And this Thanksgiving... We're not only going to be thankful for everything that we have, because that's what the holiday is all about. You need to take a look around and and really realize everything that you do have, small, large, big, monetarily, whatever it is. Be grateful for everything that you do have, because quite frankly, we do live in a world that isn't filled full of all sunshine and rainbows. And, uh, you know, the one thing that I've learned in my short 29 years on this planet is that you have to make the most of every situation. So... Why not try to grow your mind in super humanistic ways? Why not try to learn everything that you can? Uh, why not try to achieve everything that you can? And why not try to uh, just make the most out of every situation, basically? So take a look around. Be thankful this year uh, for everything that you do have, as chaotic as times are, everything that we have survived already. Just continue to survive and thrive, and nothing can slow you down. So with that being said, I want to dive on into a little bit of Thanksgiving history, if you will. And, you know, growing up in school, we're all taught about, you know, the sunshine and rainbow story of, you know, there's some pilgrims that met up with the native local people. They became friends and a friendship, ha a friendship happened, which did occur. But however, on the other backhand of that, life has a balance. Everything has a balance to it. And this story itself has a balance. Let's start off with the pilgrims themselves. Look how brute and mighty that they were. Look at the uh, skill set that they have. Look at the, the mental, not only brutality, but brashness and bravery that they had to take on the Atlantic Ocean, to take on that uh, challenge of crossing, to survive all the hardships that it took to get across. By the way, the pilgrims had a ship that wasn't fit to cross the Atlantic, Atlantic at the time, but they had to get away because they craved something new, a new adventure, which is what every human craves, essentially. Mm -hmm. And uh, they craved a new adventure. So they, with all those hardships, they finally made it over here. And guess what happened? Through the disease and perils and, and starvation and, and, and hardships and hard work, they met up with people that they've never seen before. I mean, I'm sorry, but, you know, Imagine the shell shock there on both sides. The native people, who the hell are you guys? And the pilgrims, well, who the hell are you? <laughs> you know? So can you imagine the 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 the, uh, the 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 friction between the two groups? You know, initially, uh, but essentially what happened is, if I if my memory recollects me, I think the native's name was Squanto, who ended up uh, uh, interacting with with English tradesmen. And, and hunters and trappers. Mm -hmm. I mean, what are the odds? I mean, that, that has to be destiny and fate. What are the odds? This pilgrim group who basically all pilgrims, all new world people, you know, creation of America, what was it? Fleeing religi religious or political persecution, basically. Fleeing what they didn't believe in. You know, they were being controlled. The pilgrims wanted their own religious freedom. That's why they exact to come over here. And Squanto sparked this friendship with them, though. Uh, because he learned English. I mean, what are the odds of that? You know, he learns English, you know, from English tradesmen. That just goes to show you the activity in the world, even at that time. I mean, there was, you know, we, we live in this world of planes and everything and cell phones, you know, we're more interconnected than ever. But if you can you imagine, you know, there's people walking and trading and exploring and, 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 you know, taking this to taking one animal species to another part of the globe. You know, I mean, that's about as cool as it gets if you can put yourself in those shoes. Mm -hmm. So through all those hardships, they sparked this friendship. Why? Because they agreed. The pilgrims agreed through all their hardships. They lost a lot of people. They, they needed help, you know, in the new land, learning how to grow crops and everything along that line. They sparked this friendship. How? Uh, uh, they promised Squanto protection from rival tribes. So that just goes to show you even even natives, you know, back in, 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 in you know, pre-American times, you know, even pre-pilgrim times, I'm getting at, 
their pre-programmed times and pre-exploration times when it was just natives by themselves, there was all this animosity and division in the, in, in the uh, native territories, the different native territories. Certain tribes got along, certain tribes didn't, but there was always this am- animosity, you know, in certain regions of, of different territories of tribes. So, uh, you know, when this happened, they promised protection for Squanto and his tribe, you know, in, in return for helping them grow crops, everything along that line. So uh, that's kind of the overall story of it. And this is what really happened on the first Thanksgiving. And it's from VaughnNews.com. In the fall of 1621, the Pilgrims celebrated their first successful harvest by firing guns and cannons in Plymouth, Massachusetts. The noise alarmed ancestors of the contemporary Wampanoag tribe, nation, who went to investigate. This is how Native people came to be present at the first Thanksgiving, says Ramona Peters, historic preservation officer of the Mashpee Wampanoag tribe, which suggests that paintings depicting Native Americans sitting down for a bountiful and harmonious meal with colonial families is basically a lie. The Wampanoag people, men, were not really sure what they were being told was actually true. So they stayed around for a few days. They camped outside, said Peters. This is the animosity, you know, the friction initially. Uh, So there was not a lot of tension as well. All of these men warriors were next door in the woods at night in the dark close by sleeping amongst, you know, camps and one another. Uh, Thanksgiving with the Indians by N.C. White is the painting in here. And it's quite a quite a beautiful little, you know, picturesque painting of the time. I wish I could broadcast it to you. But uh, while the uh, Wampanoag people. Uh, have shared food with the pilgrims during this strange fact-finding mission. They also hunted for food. What was actually eaten at the first Thanksgiving is far different from the turkey, mashed potatoes, and stuffing that grace all of our holiday tables today. According to experts at Plymouth Plantation, a living history museum in Plymouth, Massachusetts, uh, we know turkey was plentiful in Plymouth Colony, but we don't know for certain that it was served at the meal. Plymouth Plantation's Kate Sheenan told VOA via email, uh, the likelihood is very strong, though. Mussels, lobster, and eel were also available as well and enjoyed both by English and the Wampanoag peoples. Uh, Plymouth Plantation attempts to replicate the original Plymouth colony settlement established by the English colonists in the 17th century and makes educated guesses about what else might have been eaten on the first Thanksgiving table. English gardens probably produced cabbages, carrots, cucumbers, colwort, or collards, parsnips, turnips, beets, onions, radishes, lettuce, and spinach, as well as sage, thyme, parsley, majorum, fennel, anise, and dill, Sheenan says. Wampanoag and English women also cultivated bean squashes, including pumpkins. Other foods that would have been available at the time of the year include Jerusalem artichokes, wild onions, garlic, watercress, cranberries, concord grapes, and native nuts, including walnuts and chestnuts. Native people also dried out of season fruits such as blueberries and currants and added them to dis- dishes throughout the year, Sheenan says. Although Americans now celebrate Thanksgiving on the fourth Thursday in November, historians can't pinpoint the exact date of the very first Thanksgiving. We know it took place over three days, sometimes between mid-September and early November in 1621, and was considered a harvest celebration following a successful planting of multicolored flint corn or maize, says Sheenan. It wasn't until 1863 during the Civil War that Thanksgiving became a national holiday. President Abraham Lincoln furthered an idealistic Thanksgiving narrative for for strategic reasons. Of course, you know, political strategic regions were thrown into having the first Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. It's natural that that had to be thrown in there with what's going on now. Uh, A woman named Sarah Joseph Hale, the editor of an influential women's magazine, had a hand in convincing President Lincoln that the national Thanksgiving holiday would help unite the war-torn country, which, yeah, it was a socio-political move to try to reunite the North and the South after the Civil War to have this national holiday. Good idea, says Peters of the Mashpee Wampanoag Drive. It was the brainchild to have this national holiday called Thanksgiving, and its popularity grew through time. But it was actually a pretty smart move to establish something to unite families. During the Civil War, a lot of families actually split down the middle, brothers against brothers. So on the one hand, you see how this graded up. I guess we get the basis of it. And, you know, today it just goes into diving in saying Native Americans commemorate Thanksgiving in different ways. Some consider it a day of mourning, given the rapid colonization and displacement of the people. Others gather with their families, but the pilgrims aren't on their minds. So you see how... You know, it created this friendship, but eventually created this division, then created this friendship again. Mm -hmm. So there's like this love, hate, you know, sunshine, rainbow and tragedy and darkness story to Thanksgiving. 
you know, like anything, there's been ups and downs. And I just want people, you know, especially after learning, you know, the more in-depth ups and downs nature version of Thanksgiving, which is the actual truth of Thanksgiving. Be thankful for everything that you do have, because quite frankly, we live in chaotic times and we're as lucky as we are that uh, we all haven't fallen off the teeter-totter yet. So uh, just take a look around and be thankful for everything that you have. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I can completely agree more because uh, also now you see history repeating itself in a lot of different ways too. Uh, right now, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of division, even with the political stuff, it's brother against brother right now, uh, family member against family member, where they're split politically. Oh and, yeah, straight you know, down the middle. <laughs> Yeah, it's straight down the middle. Like you have you have Trump and Biden supporters on either side, and you have uh, uh, you know, COVID anti-COVID type uh, or mask anti-mask type. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Vax no vax, mask no mask, left right, up down, east west, north south. What other split direction do you want? This thumb that way, that thumb that way, huh? Well, look at this magic trick. D D D D D D. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, this is exactly yeah, where uh, you want to go, <laughs> essentially. What's going on is it's uh, it's some of these negative forces out there that are trying to keep everybody split and not unified. So they're creating all these for and against uh, scenarios throughout history. When anybody tries to get unified, uh, anybody tries to get unified, they find ways to split them, find uh, racial differences, find political differences, anything so now more than ever before at this time of year even now it's uh you know it's time to set those aso things aside and actually be more unified and we you got a doggy in the show too yeah yeah he, he's been scratching at my legs so i figured i better met, uh, appease the beasts appease <laughs> the beasts i tell you huh ace mm -hmm. good boy yeah, he's a good boy <laughs> i get what you're saying about uh, unity though and unifying i mean uh, that's what the country needs, you know, I, well, not just the country. I, that sounds egotistical and selfish in a way. That's what the world needs. That's what humanity needs, I tell you. That's what our universe needs, probably, I tell you. <laughs> uh, but uh, because, uh, yeah, I just, uh, it's hard to, hard to uh, engulf and uh, realize everything that is going on. There's a lot of good, don't get me wrong, but it's kind of seemed like that bad is outweighing that good in an essence, you know? And, you know, we're just all pretending to ignore it and pretending that it's invisible and pretending like it's not there. And that's why there's times like the holidays, you know, to forget that one or two days, but don't forget it every day because guess what? That's when you get stepped on and you get crushed like a little bug. And I have a feeling it's going to happen to us eventually. <laughs> and uh, it's just uh, in some which way, shape or form. I don't know whether it'll be man-made, uh, 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 you know, biblical to an essence, supernatural, solar flare, earthquake, uh, what it will be, you know, uh, pandemic, uh, uh, zombie apocalypse, uh, whatever, you know, I, I just have a feeling that. AI takeover, that's another one. Look at the rise of technology every, every uh, what, two months, or, or excuse me, every 26 months, uh, technology replicates itself to the next generation, essentially. So it advances itself yet another degree, another life form in, in my mind, you know, another life, uh, you know, extends its life instead of, you know, like us slowly dying, I guess, uh, essentially, you know. Uh, so that's the comparison with that, but there's just a lot going on in the world right now and the sky is the limit. So, uh, be aware and, and of your surroundings and be aware of what's going on just because knowledge is power, baby. And you need to attain more knowledge. Everybody does. That's how you know when, when or you will not be taken advantage of essentially in this, uh, God forsaken, but amazing world. <laughs> Yeah, it's essentially know thy enemy in this in this situation. That's why I uh, why when I look into different alien cases and look into different uh, look into different cryptid cases or look into different uh, like hauntings and all sorts of stuff, I got to know what I'm exactly I'm up against. Also, now this is a time of dis complete discernment too. What are uh, what are your own thoughts? What is what is in your own heart space? Basically, what uh, is around you that is not you that is actually trying to get you to do things wrong you know, uh, keep aware of your own thoughts of in your own environment and keep your knowledge up, do your research on things and uh, just don't, don't hate your neighbor just because they're on the opposite side of the political fence. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You said it right there. And, and, and that's the issue. They, they refuse to work. You know, uh, I don't know if it's the party system as a whole, which obviously probably is, or the people as a whole, or the combination of the two, which it probably is. But uh, just, to, yeah, the, 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 I shouldn't say willingness, the refusal to work together, I guess would be the appropriate term. The refuseness, the refusalness to work together, whatever the correct terminology would be for that, is the issue at hand. And uh, 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 until, you know, we balance that teeter-totter effect politically, uh, I have a feeling that uh, we are in for a long haul of uh, (laughs) this way, that way, north, south, east, west, up, down, whichever direction that you want to spin, baby. Yeah, I'm right, you're wrong, you know, uh, you're lesser than me sort of thing. And that's usually how it's been throughout history. So now, like I said, more than ever, it's time to set all that side, uh, all that aside, step outside of the whole chess game that's going on right now. Take a look at everything that's going on. And Stepping outside Pandora's box. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And that's basically what's been open. That's why all of this, uh, this junk is in everybody's face right now, because it's all the problems that humanity has to fix, all just being thrown in people's faces right now. Hmm. Hmm. Amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, it's a uh, yeah, what a crazy world that we live in, baby. Mm-hmm. But yet amazing at the same time how it all just, you know, like I guess it's that balance effect how it all just somehow barely stays into play and stays into motion without being thrown, you know, you know, off shifted, off balanced, uh, too much, just weird, uh, weird how it all comes together and it's glued and it works, I guess. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know, uh, and uh, what is old, uh, you know, is actually coming out now. Both good and bad things that are old are actually coming into, into play now. Things that have been forgotten, histories and cultures that have been forgotten, uh, like the Tartarian Empire, for instance, that was lost to history. That's coming back out now. There's uh, there's uh, tribal histories that are coming back out. There's uh, also negative and positive beings that are coming back out. Uh, uh, that uh, are actually uh, reflections of our ancient past, reflections of our ancient history that we've forgotten, like old wars, old battles, even old enemies uh, coming at us from alternate lifetimes, uh, past lives, other universes, other timelines. That's all converging right now in like a bottleneck of of the rest of the Mandela effect I came to find out is happening this year. That's why it's also very chaotic right now. Every bit of hell that humanity has like basically conjured from history is coming out to actually be transmuted and corrected right at the moment. And if you everybody is still pay, paying attention, which I know that you probably are because you're an amazing fan base and you want to grow your mind, which is the most important thing. But, and speaking of this, let's do a little, little, little uh, comment challenge here. He just mentioned Mandela Effect. Right now, I want you to open up your mind. I want you to envision what I'm getting ready to tell you. I want you to comment your answer. Which one do you remember the Kit Kat being? Do you remember the Kit Kat having a dash in the center of it? Or do you remember the Kit Kat not having a dash in the center of it? Comment your answer below. Exactly. <laughs> What's your the answer? Bears with the different, uh, different, yeah. uh, different spellings. Or uh, even here's something even, uh, even uh, more so. Uh, do you remember a, a building or a workplace or a house on your street that is either no longer there or there's a new building in its place? That's actually been happening too quite recently with the Mandela effect. There could be buildings that have uh, come and gone. I came across a building that people remember working at that other people uh, now uh, believe doesn't exist. Drove past it. It's not there anymore. It's like the missing floor phenomenon inside of an elevator, you know, <laughs> the missing floor. Oh, the 13th. There's no 13th floor here. What? I was on the 13th floor. Ma'am, are you insane? No, I was on the 13th floor, I tell you. <laughs> it's just one of those goofy, you know, but weird, you know, how do you explain it? You know, if people remember a building being in one spot, a building, and then, you know, it vanishes overnight. In fact, I had this conversation with one of my cousins here not too long ago. I don't know what the issue was, and I'll have to show you when you're back here, Chris. Uh, I will. Uh, and I need to show some other people. I don't know if this is just like uh, a photograph aging, you know, and it's losing its color. Mm-hmm. But like it, it's a picture of the family ranch that I grew up on. And there's a pond behind there and a big garden that my grandfather had. And this picture, 
I do not see the pond and I do not see the garden. And I also don't see the barn and corrals that was over off in this other direction. So the, the way that I grew up and remember the place, which I know that it's still that way, it has to be just a photograph issue. But, you know, it's like it, 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 Mandela effect is the first thing that I thought of. And, you know, I, I feel that it is at a, the experience of the Mandela effect is at a high it's at a higher amplitude now because I, I have spoke to people that are remembering things a certain way as opposed, you know, previously they're remembering things a certain way as opposed to they are right now, essentially. And uh, what's the change? And most of the time there's something so simple like the dash on the Kit Kat bar, you know, they're so simple. What the hell does it mean? <laughs> you know, what, what, what's been happening is there's elements of other parallel timelines that have fused into ours. As some collapse, the elements of the other ones blend into the timeline we're in. They might have some minute difference or some drastic difference where it may even be a person that was there in one timeline and not there in another, or a building uh, in one timeline and not there in another. That's basically what's happening as you're seeing this folding in of, of uh, timelines. Eventually, it's going to stop when time eventually heals itself from all the incursions, like some of these aliens that use time travel technology that have messed up the timeline. Some humans have time travel technology that have messed up the timeline. So it's having to heal and course correct itself. Yeah, probably, probably black budget military technology, which is cool. I think it's cool, but hey, I want to teleport to another country, you know, just automatically. That way I can go explore and enjoy my life. As long as, uh, you know, my body doesn't get turned in half and my backside's on my front side, my front side's on my backside, you know, <laughs> I'm this uh, amorphed, uh, weird humanoid, humanoid genic creature, I guess, you know, through the, the uh, ionization process, whatever would happen to teleport, you know. Uh, but uh, uh, teleporter devices are actually interesting. They're like portals that could be set up uh, in different countries, different homes. They could be like, yeah. uh, like dialing a telephone. But what's interesting about the time travel technology when Joanne and I were in Jamestown. Now this is going into like the whole New England thing. We were in uh, we were in, in colonial Jamestown came to find out that John Smith was actually supposed to be president of the United States, but there was a Montauk time agent that went back in time. His last name was West. And he had a silver box with him with a letter M engraved on the top of it. And that's historically, you can actually find that on the Jamestown site. And I came mm -hmm. in to find out silver boxes were actually prevalent amongst some of the uh, Montauk time agents that went back. They went back and prevented John Smith from being uh, being president because it didn't align with the timeline that they were accustomed to. They saw that it was going to create its own little offshoot. So they went back and actually, they thought they were course correcting it, but they also went back with uh, diseases. They went back with uh, future knowledge and stuff like that. So they did, they did screw up some stuff. Like I found out that there was a scale that I came to find out was it was 50, 30, 20. It was 50% futuristic diseases, 30% uh, like murders, and 20% natural cause deaths that took place because of the Mandela effect. And not mm. the Mandela effect, but the Montauk project. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I remember one of my favorite stories about that Montauk project. What was that Montauk beast that was found? Wasn't that like a... Uh, wasn't it like a beaverish kind of weird mammal looking creature? Let me see if I can find that real quick. I, I remember the month. I know what you're talking about that that creature that was like some kind of weird like uh, uh, like creature that washed up on the uh, on the shores or something like that. Yeah, there's a lot of government experiments that actually wash up on the uh, on the shores every now and again, uh, or things that come from other timelines because of the Mandela effect as well. Well, yes, and uh, you said it with like uh, uh, genetically manipulated and created uh, mm -hmm. insects in my mind too, and, and animals like Lyme disease, you know, that's an interesting story too in itself. Eric Traub, a Nazi scientist mm -hmm. uh, who was experimenting with, with that, he was trying to create a disease-ridden bug that would bite American soldiers or, you know, enemy soldiers and, uh, and infect them and kill them. You know, it's a secretive weapon, you know, an invisible weapon, you know, essentially a uh, biologically created weapon uh, under operation paperclip where many Nazi scientists came to the United States, their war crimes, their war crime charges were waived as long as they'd start developing this technology for the United States, which look, 
technology replicates itself. That's the huge advancement here. And that's why technology is utterly changing the world and making the world a crazier place in my mind. It's making it better, but making it worse at the same time, <laughs> essentially. Uh, uh, but, and becoming very, very, very powerful. Hello, Skynet. <laughs> exactly. AI, you either get Terminator or you get data, pretty much. It's basically how we teach artificial intelligence. You know, it's like how we create it and what we co-create. Yes. And, and, and see, what happened is with the, with, with the Lyme disease and ticks, he ended up, Eric Traub, under Operation Paperclip, he got this research facility called Plum Island, okay? And uh, uh, 15 years after he beginning research 20 years after he began research sometime in that time window if I recollect correctly uh, uh, Lyme disease popped up for the first time the first recorded case was in Lyme Connecticut that's how it got its name Lyme disease Lyme Connecticut uh, but the first recorded disease now Lyme disease has been around in creatures you know for millennial uh, millennia I guess uh, essentially but the first recorded case, you know, that this is where there's contradicting information. But if it was gone, then it replicated itself. That suggests to me that perhaps maybe Lyme disease was found in uh, in ice somewhere and then it was injected into a bug. And uh, then, you know, there it comes, you know. Now, whether, you know, uh, whether it was purposefully released accidentally, you know, or if that actually happened, which I think something to that effect did happen, mm -hmm. uh, because anything's a possibility. Here's a cool mind exercise for everybody to do. Cool. Uh, very, very cool to do. I want you to take a look around right now. Open up your mind. Take a look around. Take a look around your house, wherever you're at. Take a look. As long as you're not driving and listening to this, you know, keep your eyes on the road. But still look ahead. Take a look around you. Notice everything that is man-made. Whatever it is. Uh, a coffee cup, a road sign, a computer. Uh, whatever's man-made around you. Clothing, you know, whatever's man-made. At one time, it was only in a person's mind. It was only an idea. It was only in the imagination. And then what is it now? It's reality. So <laughs> whatever you think of can become a reality. There's some possible combination of some which way, shape, or form to get it to be that effect. <laughs> There's a process or a combination of things, but anything can become a reality. And uh, that's the scary thing about technology. That's, you know, where it's going to engulf and capture and control in uh, my mind eventually. I don't know if it'll be within our lifetime, you know, or whether it'll be 100 years after us if this world <laughs> stays in, in contact, uh, you know, uh, that long. Uh, who knows? Uh, but, uh, yeah, kind of a... Kind of a uh, Amazing thing, isn't it? Uh, mm -hmm. At the same time, though, very, very, oh, yeah. very. Yeah, with uh, with this, you know, what it will do is be like our own reflection. You know, we stay unified and we open up our heart spaces and co-create, uh, co-create uh, what we're supposed to co-create, and not more war and uh, and uh, hatred and all of that. You know, when mm -hmm. we actually stay in our creative spaces and actually work together, either scientifically, artistically. Uh, we create some kind of AI like that, which we already have to an extent. And there's alien AI out there. But if uh, we uh, actually amplify the, the uh, proper energies and the proper um, uh, thoughts and the proper heart space and creativity, it's not going to it's not going to take us over. It'll actually work with us. Uh, and also mm -hmm. transhumanism is not necessarily the way to go either because it's incompatible with our spirit energy. It would end up dulling our, our spirit, basically. And, and, that, and that, that, that's already happening, you know, artificial parts, artificial limbs, you know, th that, that could be probably categorized as transhumanism. Mm -hmm. You know, an artificial uh, uh, piece of equipment or slash technology that's being used to enhance human capability. Uh, you know, essentially. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, that's rampant, you know, and, and the sky's the limit with that, too. I, I like to correlate it back to, you know, there's a movie for everything. And that's an amazing, amazing thing about Hollywood. I like to correlate it and uh, compare it to the movie Repo Men with uh, 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 Jude Law and uh, is it Forrest Whitaker, I believe, yeah. uh, where they, you know, people have artificial parts you know that are made organs you know that are artificial that are keeping people alive well it's so ridiculously expensive they can't pay it repo men they go back to steal the body part 
to, to kill the person essentially. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, very, very cool. And that, you know, very well could become a possibility as well. That's the bad thing about movies because some of them might lead to ideas that, that uh, while are amazing, there's that balance effect. Uh, on the other hand, uh, kind of creepy. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, you know, I guess that's, that's the, uh, that's the benefit and the sacrifice, I guess. Yeah. And also, yeah, I've seen, I've seen repo men. Yeah. That's actually very interesting where they have the artificial, uh, artificial, uh, organs, but I could, uh, I could see that, that kind of timeline being a possibility if people don't, don't wake up and come out of their funk. Basically, I could see something like like that. Then you have also the opposite end of the spectrum. You have um, the movie. Uh, what was it? Uh, uh, Transcendence with uh, Johnny Depp. That's uh, that's artificial intelligence based. That's basically uh, they showed the different levels of artificial intelligence in that uh, in that movie, from ones and zeros all the way to nanotechnology. Uh, they showed that. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> I haven't seen that yet. I'm gonna have to watch that. Most definitely. Yeah, that's a that's a perfect movie. It shows the birth of artificial intelligence. See, Johnny Depp's character is dying of some kind of cancer, and uh, he wants to transfer his consciousness to a computer. So basically, his his consciousness teaches the computer how to basically hold the bulk of. Uh, bulk of his consciousness and he eventually can bring himself back to life as a uh, nanotech body basically pretty cool, cool. Yeah. <laughs> and what was that called again it's called transcendence it's actually oh, a really good okay. disclosure movie when it comes to ai hmm. i'm surprised i haven't seen that yet i really like johnny depp too i don't know yeah, why good job with uh, with uh, that one but yeah this uh, w- uh what uh i know uh, uh Isaac wanted to come through today to talk about some things with Thanksgiving and stuff like that. I know we got a little bit off track, but that's fine. It's I like the I like the back and forth. How about this? Hey, how about this? Hey, I'll tell a little bit of story, and maybe uh, Isaac can pick up on about the, who the Wampanoag people are. Okay. Uh, just describe something about them after I will go back into the Thanksgiving realm, and I'll describe some. I'll, I'll go into detail about who they were as a people. Oh, you know, and that's that's a glorious thing about native people too. You know, they lived off the land, and uh, uh, physically, mentally, spiritually, they were just very in tune with themselves, and uh, uh, that's why you can learn a lot from native peoples, and uh, especially uh, the 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 uh, I like to call ancient crafts you know, that they attained just the knowledge it took to, especially, you know, back in the day for people as a whole, just to survive the hardships. And, and, and you just learn a lot that way, I guess, mentally, physically, and spiritually, you know, and it's hard to put yourself in their, their shoes in today's world. You know, that, I guess that's a tough thing to do. But uh, this article is from Plymouth.org. And it's who are the Wampanoag? Uh, the Wampanoag are one of many nations of people all over North America who were here long before any Europeans arrived and have survived until today. Many people use the word Indian to describe us, but they prefer to be called native people, which I, I agree. Uh, our name uh, Wampanoag means people of the first light. In the 1600s, we had as many as 40,000 people in the 67 villages that made up the Wampanoag Nation. These villages covered the territory along the East Coast as far as West, I'm going to pronounce this hopefully, West Augusta, today called Weymouth. Uh, all of what is now Cape Cod and the islands of Nantucket and Noipi, now called Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard. Okay, cool. And southeast as far as the Poconocket, now Bristol and Warren, Rhode Island. We have been living on this part of uh, Turtle Island for over 15,000 years. The Wampanoag, like many other native people, often refer to the earth as Turtle Island. Today, about four to 5,000 Wampanoag live in New England. There are three primary groups, Mashpee, Aquinna, and Mannomet, uh, with several other groups forming again as well. Recently, we also have found some of our relations in the Caribbean islands. These people are descendants of the native Wampanoag people who were sent into slavery after war between the Wampanoag and the English. See, there's that togetherness and the division. 
Mm. We as the people still continue our way of life through our oral traditions, the telling of our family and nation's history, ceremonies like the Wampanoag language, song and dance, social gatherings, hunting and fishing. The Wampanoag homeland provided bountiful food for fulfillment of all our needs. It was up to it was up to the people to keep the balance. There's balance and respect for all living things and to receive all the gifts from the creator. We were seasonal people li living in the forest in the valleys during winter. During the summer, spring and fall, we moved it to the rivers, ponds, the ocean to plant crops, uh, fish and gather foods from the forests. See, that's how beautiful it was to live back then. All that fresh food, all that, that nature escape. It, there was no stress. That's why people had better, longer lives, really. On the whole scheme of things, the only thing that killed people was disease because we're better sanitized nowadays. And, you know, there was more bloodshed and war uh, back then than there was now because we have more laws and rules and regulations to control all that. Mm -hmm. uh, but rare here to end the article, right here to end the article, excuse me, because of the many changes in North America, we as the Wampanoag cannot live as our ancestors did. We adapt and still continue to live in the way of the people of the first light. So very, very neat little article that kind of describes the Wampanoag people. But uh, maybe Isaac would like to piggyback up off of that and uh, describe, you know, kind of what maybe the hardships that they went through and how they grew as a person, as a people. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Your audio has kind of gone uh, gone down a little bit. Uh, yes, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Uh, talk uh, once, let's see. Of course. Uh, we would be having technical difficulties, wouldn't we? Yeah, it's a very muffled sound. It's like talking like that, but really low, so it's like really... See, this happens, folks. Technical difficulties, always, yeah. Well, I imagine so. That's usually the case, is it not? <laughs> yeah, you're a bit louder. It's muffled, but you're louder, so that's fine. All right. Uh, Perfect. How about there that? We there we are. <clears throat> it sounds like it's on old-timey radio, but that's fine. Let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah too bad we don't have any old-timey percolating music in the background, but oh well. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So we'll see um, what uh, – Isaac, did you want to come through and uh, – um, and make sure it's you. Okay. Nice. Yeah, before while you were talking, he was showing me uh, images of um, when of when things kept falling apart and then coming back together. When, uh, um, like the Wimpanoag, for instance, so when they uh, went against the English, he was showing me. Uh, uh, okay, he showed me images first, so it's like it's. Uh, where P, uh, where like the uh, both the English and the and the native peoples were uh, were actually uh, getting possessed by different uh, beings like different uh, draconian consciousnesses and stuff like that. I'm seeing like I'm seeing different different like um, different beings like coming up either out of out of like the co along the coast out of the water or like um, uh, I'm seeing different lights too. I'm seeing different li uh, like like orbs and such too. Uh, that both sides were seeing, and I believe this is what was causing them to actually fight and then uh, come back together. Very much the same way as different entities control people now. It's the same thing. So, um, okay, uh, Isaac, did you want to come through? Is it safe for you to come through today? Let's see. Okay. Let's see here. <clears throat> okay. I uh, don't have my crystal out, so you can just use me for the moment. Let's see. And... Isaac, whenever it comes to native cryptids, uh, cryptids that have haunted the natives for centuries, millennia, uh, I know that the skinwalkers have been very, very prevalent and where the skinwalkers an issue for the Wampanoag peoples. Yes, indeed, the skinwalkers were prevalent. That goes back to our previous conversation on werewolves and dogmen. Some of them were conjured uh, using either satanic rituals or uh nature rituals that, that were hijacked we're not saying that all dogmen are bad it's just some of them have been linked to different rituals involving conjurings and the like either satanic or uh some kind of curse or spell very much like your skinwalker ranch and or rugaru mythologies this is also has been taken place in uh in and around where the whippinoag came from and during the times of the English and Wipanoag conflicts. This was, uh, these cryptids were quite uh, actually prolific around that time, uh, stealing different people from both sides of the uh, 
conflict, either stealing people and or children. This actually happened in uh, England as well and in parts of Europe. This actually coincides with a past life of his own, whereas uh, he himself experienced an expression as one of these dogmen and or person also that was actually had family stolen by one of these dogmen. In uh, the uh, situation that you are actually mentioning currently, there are also beings that would come out of the water, such as certain octopi energies that occupied Atlantis, uh, that also, as you'd say, unfroze for a temporary amount of time and were conjured from an area underneath your Atlantic Ocean at that time. This is also where some of those lights uh, came from. There are good and bad mer people as well that were involved in these conflicts. There were mostly bad reptilian uh, entities that were involved in these conflicts and causing these conflicts. And there is also artificial intelligence of the alien kind that was also involved in these particular conflicts causing and or draining energy from these particular conflicts. The Wipanoag people are actually descendant from uh, uh, tribes that were actually from both Lemuria and Mexico, as well as uh, uh, earlier Lemurian period, you see. The Lemurians, even though they're on the West Coast, uh, conjured, as you would say, uh, many different tribes, people, including Polynesian and some native people. Uh, Weepanoag actually were some of those that interacted with Atlantis. They're descended from the Lemurian tribes that were uh, posted on the East Coast during the uh, Lemurian and Atlantean conflicts. Yes, there was wars back in that time, you see, uh, that actually were caused by the very same forces I just mentioned. And some of those dogmen also came from your Atlantis and their descendants of those. So therefore, the war still continues in some fashion, you see. And some of those European tribes, such as your English, also had descend our descendant lineages from Atlantis. Vikings also, this is why the natives battled with the Vikings, because again, Lemuria, Atlantis, still at war even after all those thousands of years. This is a conflict that has uh, regurgitated and perpetuated itself through history, even through different peoples that may be the descendants of both of these particular areas of the world. Hmm. I got one more cryptid creature for you since it's Thanksgiving kind of lore time. These are trickster spirits that like to steal things and just play, you know, mischievous little games on people. Pugwudgies. How were they in, you know, kind of more colonial times? Were they an influence in anything? Most definitely. And they are a heavy influence now in stealing things. Uh, nickname I give them are puke midgets, as in Pugwudgies. Okay. <laughs> but uh, in fact, yeah. <laughs> they actually are a very, uh, as you would say, large pain in the ass because they actually are a small tribal group that exists in many of your wooded and forest areas, very much almost like your Ewok looking uh, tribes people, even though that is also a dogman species as well. The Pugwaji is actually more of a hominid species that is more of a cousin to humans, uh, but also a cryptid type, very much like your uh, Sasquatch and or forest person. But these particular pains in the butt actually go into your houses and actually steal keys, stones, coins, and anything they can actually grab. Sometimes they knock things over and break them if they cannot steal them. Some of them are nice. Most of them actually are pains in the butt. But uh, does not mean that humans get to abuse them eventually later through mm -hmm. conflicts or wars. But we, uh, you do not necessarily have to put up with their, their thievery and bullying either. Can they appear as shadows in your home, Pugwudgies? Can they appear as shadows, like shadow people? Yes, they can. They would be roughly between uh, three and four feet high, and they would actually uh, be covered in hair. And yes, so uh, given their uh, their different dimensional and frequency difference to humans currently, and the fact that they can come in and out of different uh, frequency pockets with during, using different sound variations and different vocal variations, very much like the forest people, yes, they would appear as uh, shorter shadow people in your home. 
And I just want to say real quick to the audience, if uh, you've had a shadow person experience, no, no matter what the nature, where at, uh, share your story below. Don't don't feel ashamed to share your story. They're quite interesting. And it is a, a it's a very common phenomenon that people are experiencing. And uh, no matter what it was, whether in a dream state, whether you're awake, no matter what, share your shadow people stories. We want to hear about them. Yes, and uh, when it, when it comes to another cryptid creature that kind of haunts the East Coast, there's one that's been known as the Dover Demon. Do you have any information on that? The Dover Demon. The, there is actually this is actually a composite of uh, actually multiple paranormal experiences, but the majority of what the Dover Demon actually is are not only a mixture of elemental uh, uh, mischievousness, but there are also different, more of the hostile cases of the Dover demon would be more reptilian in nature. And uh, I know that like throughout time, you see these, you see these supposed different like demonic hauntings. Do you think that this is possibly just a demon sent to an area that was supposed to torment the area for a certain amount of time or... Yes, indeed. Uh, there actually are instances where some of these demon and jinn types are actually sent to different areas in which to either drain energy and or torment the people. Uh, however, there are also uh, Draco reptilians, which are the classic demon types with the horns, you see, uh, that mm -hmm. actually uh, go of their own accord and also are sent by their Orion handlers to actually torment and drain energy out of particular areas there are feral versions of them that actually grab humans if they venture into underground caverns and caves but there are some that do wander through the towns and villages even now that actually uh, do actually either hold the uh, the energetic space stalk people for centuries in their family of lineages or actually uh, drain energy out of a multitude of different humans and crowds within a variant of different uh, either events or sporting events in uh, different parts of your country. But yes, these things do occur. And it's kind of almost like everybody's had that feeling too. You go from feeling good, you know, just uh, just like a wall hits you and you just don't know where, you know, why. Uh, it's just like a complete change in your behavior, you know. And, uh, it's just weird how bad energy can affect a person. Perhaps you've been bitten. <laughs> but uh, when it comes back, to, let's roll back around to like Thanksgiving. Uh, real quick, let me find my page I was on. When it rolls back to Thanksgiving, what are some of the best festive, uh, uh, I guess, what are some of the best festive, uh, 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 kind of a, weird way to word this because I'm trying to combine ancient lore with like modern day. I guess, how do you think the future of Thanksgiving will evolve to be? I guess it would be the correct way to be. Uh, do you think Thanksgiving will continue to be festive or do you think like this, what's going on in the world right now is kind of a, uh, around the holiday times especially, it just kind of feels like it's a separation tactic. And I know that the virus is serious, but how do you think the, the, the celebration, the involvement of celebrating Thanksgiving will be? Well, it will actually be for a time picked apart, you see, picked apart uh, for things that no longer belong in it, like different uh, religious uh, type of uh, uh, gatherings, like say it is involved in Christianity at the moment as a Christian holiday, it will actually evolve into an everything holiday where it will not pertain to any one religion, but it will actually be picked apart for its truths and not truths, either historically, religiously, or spiritually. Uh, this, uh, this will actually begin to evolve into more of a, a wholeness uh, concept, you see. And Christmas is pretty much the same way. They will pick out uh, different indoctrinative uh, 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 false beliefs that people have integrated into Christmas and keep the unity. In time, the different names will change to not actually involve any religious figures. Thanksgiving will stay the same, but other people will call it different things because it still is a day to be thankful. Christmas will actually become a variant of different names 
uh, not just in companies saying uh, what people believe the birth of Christ to be. Some people will be sticklers about what the actual history is and start to morph the name. Now, none of this uh, completely matters, even though truth and history does matter. What matters is the unity factor and the, uh, and, uh, the working together, uh, basically uh, uh, the definition of what both of these days are supposed to mean. Hmm. Very interesting. Uh, I'm going to ask you kind of a wild question here. Do you have any information how people can better their health at this time? Is there kind of a tea that you could re recommend? I know temperatures are getting colder and, uh, you know, six seasons around the corner. Do you have any information on a kind of a wild tea that people might, people who are curious and adventurous and, and people who would like to better their health might be able to try some recipe or something of the times right now? That would be healthy and fitting and random for somebody to be curious and try. Well, it's actually more of a composite, you see, based on the person's own individual uh, preferences. Anything that is organic and not GMO based is actually more preferred. Anything that you can grow versus anything that you just get from your Walmart, let's say, or you get something from a local market where somebody has actually has uh, organic teas. This actually does work. Uh, different ones fuel different uh, different abilities, such as hibiscus, for uh, for uh, uh, example, uh, actually brings down your blood pressure. And different uh, teas, such as your chamomile, actually calm. Now, a, a combination between, say, your green tea for flushing out different contaminants and a combination between green tea and your hibiscus tea actually will flush out contaminants and keep certain uh, blood pressure at bay if this is a problem for yourself. In your winter time, uh, uh, with it being cold, of course, you can heat these things up. Some of your uh, uh, Japanese uh, concoctions for different different uh, teas, such as jasmine, actually uh, help out quite uh, uh, beneficially by uh, flushing out contaminants again out of your system. So anything that is beneficial to flush contaminants out of your body uh, is actually the uh, most uh, beneficial as of right now. Mm. Very interesting. There is one spice that we all love this time of year. There's a few of them, but there's one that I feel like just kind of, you know, when you see it, you know it, and, you know, you remember the taste of it, and that's cinnamon. Uh, has, do you know anything about the importance of cinnamon, especially like historically, spiritually, medicinally? Do you, can you give us any information on like the history of cinnamon, I guess, and how it can help better a person? Cinnamon is a, a better one that uh, actually will help clear out, but at the same time, on an etheric level, it actually is actually uh, not necessarily clearing the space around people, it's actually absorbing the different, uh, different contaminants in the air. It is actually transmuting some of the different uh, contaminants in the air. If you put it within your teeth and your coffees, it'll actually help uh, denigrate some of the poisons that have actually been put in some of your foods. Not that you would put it on everything. I'm just saying that it actually helps to absorb some of those uh, contaminants. Also, if it is actually placed within, as you would say, tincture format within uh, either an alcohol or non-alcoholic base, it can actually be turned into a, an absorption uh, orgone piece does it work, or an absorption actual uh, jar to actually help filter different contaminants within your ethers. Within the body, it actually helps rebalance some of the body's pH levels and balance some of the uh, contaminants that were, are within, very much like a sponge. Too much, on the other hand, actually harms people, but just the right amount on, say, your sweets, also the right amount uh, within your coffees, also within uh, what you call pumpkin spice actually works as yep. well. Yep, very lovely, very good information. I'm gonna ask you one more. Thank you for popping through today, Isaac. What What is the best information that you can give to people through uh, Thanksgiving and for celebrating Thanksgiving? How can they enjoy and enhance their lives during this? Supposed to be time of celebration, but a time of separation. 
For one, do not harbor differences in politics, even though there are rights and wrongs within your culture that also warrant uh, fighting over in a particular energetic sense. Do not get into the gaslighting, as it were, that has been put out in your culture today to actually uh, fight and war with each other, meaning the gaslighting that's put, being put out or a bull with, uh, that charges towards a matador. Do not give in to some of the information that wants to make you more violent and more uh, and harbor more feelings against your own man and your your family members on your Thanksgiving. If you are around people that you find toxic, why be in the room with them? So you see, find your own meaning for Thanksgiving, find your own creativity. But if you absolutely have to uh, be around people that you don't only see but once a year, just know that the the uh, way to actually ruin the ether is to actually conjure arguments amongst all these family members. Have debates, have uh, uh, have uh, healthy conversations, but do not uh, give in to the different programming that has been supplanted within people to actually be divided. Good, good information. Thank you for popping through today, Isaac. Thank you. It's a pleasure being on here. Looking forward to future shows. Yeah, and me most definitely as well. Thank you. Yeah, people popped in for the last one too. So uh, yeah, that uh, that uh, yeah, it's interesting. He chooses to be on here with with us primarily. We'll see if anybody else at some point comes through too. But uh, uh, but yeah, that's actually uh, very interesting. He was showing me an image of like. Like uh, like when people meet for Thanksgiving uh, dinner and everything, and there's some people that only meet once a year, and uh, like to, at the Thanksgiving, and yeah. uh, usually it ruins the whole thing. If somebody brings up politics, religion, or anything, yeah. Like that. so yeah, football. yeah, exactly, Put, yeah, football if, and politics, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it turns into a fight really quickly. You know, I heard of a story where where the cops had to be called because uh, family members were beating the crap out of each other. So yeah, I uh, I've heard of that before. It's uh, one of those things like if you give in to that, you're basically consenting to what these darker beings out there are trying to actually accomplish in the first place, and these darker people out there trying to get people to fight amongst each other. So, and, but if it's say if uh, on the flip side of this, if if you find the situation so toxic, uh, basically uh, uh, find what you're thankful for by not being around some of those people and find uh, a way to celebrate Thanksgiving, uh, you know, in a different way. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. And I, I must just say, you know, to kind of wrap this thing up, uh, couldn't say it any better than that. We kind of started off that way. We're kind of ended that way, but just enjoy your time. Enjoy each day, you know, not just this holiday time, but enhance it during this holiday time. You know, that's when you eat a little more. That's when you, that's when you be festive and you, you just fill up and you have a good time, you know. Try not to worry about anything. Times are crazy and stressful enough. You have to let loose and have fun, but be responsible and safe and be wise. Don't get sick. Try not to get sick. You know, that's the best thing that I can tell anybody. Uh, just take care of yourself uh, mentally, physically, and spiritually. And during these holiday times, while you let loose and have fun, enhance the ability to take care of yourself mentally, physically, and spiritually. <laughs> Ramp it up. And uh, there's only benefits to that. There's only uh, uh, long-term, short-term, immediate benefits to that, all three of them. So with that being said, I want every single one of you to enjoy your holidays, enjoy Thanksgiving, be festive, have fun, fill up, and uh, just uh, remember it and uh, grow with the times and uh, enjoy your family times if you get that opportunity. But fill up, have fun. We'll see everybody in the next episode. Chris, anything you want to say? Yeah, just uh, be thankful for what uh, what is uh, uh, going on in your life right now that is positive. Learn from what is actually going on that isn't so you can move on past it. And Isaac has a joke to end this off. He goes, and be thankful for puke midgets, everybody. Is what yeah. he <laughs> have a sense of humor. That's what he wanted to say. But uh, have a sense That's of humor. right. That's right. Be open to humor, too. You know, there's nothing like the funny bone that will cure your anxiety, cure 
a lot of problems, you know, laughter can be healing. It can be helpful towards enhancing human health. So I've had plenty of giggles this holiday season time as well. And thank you, everybody, who have now entered and now exited the conspiracy sector. Thank you, everybody. You said it, baby. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.